what is the difference between the basic panel adjustments, the highlights, shadows, whites and blacks, and the tone curve in Lightroom when it comes to adjusting the contrast of your image? Well, these two tools actually work completely differently. They're not the same as one another. In this video, I'll show you exactly how they work and how they're different, and also share some tips that I've learned when it comes to using the tone curve. So here I have an image that I shot on the Fuji GFX, and you can see that some parts of this image are a little too dark and some parts are a little too bright. Most notably, you can see that we've lost a lot of detail in the sky up here in the top right hand corner. All this detail in the pavement is gone. And then there's also some reflections off the glass that you can see that are total white. There's no detail there. And we can also see this in the histogram, which is just a visual representation of all the brightness values in the image from black on the left hand side to absolute white on the right hand side. You can see that the information here goes all the way up to the white point, which generally means it's clipping. We can't see it anymore. But because we're shooting raw, we have access to a lot more information than we can actually see in the JPEG preview. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull down the exposure and then you can see that we've actually pulled back a lot of that detail in the sky and in the pavement here. And you can also see that our histogram has changed drastically. So we've also got some really dark areas of the image now. So we're gonna reset the exposure back to zero. And now I'm only going to try to preserve the highlight areas of the image by using the highlights and the white sliders. So I'm gonna bring those back here. I'll just bring them all the way down to negative 100 just for the purpose of this video. And you can see that we've got some detail back here. We've got some clouds behind this palm tree. Uh, we can also see some detail coming back in the reflections of this glass. And then also the pavement, there's a lot more detail there as well. Obviously we haven't gotten it all back. We've kind of reached the limitation of the dynamic range of this camera sensor. You can also see this in the histogram. Now we have almost nothing that's reaching that absolute white point here. And the entire shape of the graph has actually changed a lot. All right, let's reset these sliders back to zero. Now, if the tone curve did exactly the same thing, then bringing this highlight point on the right hand side, theoretically, should bring back all that detail just the same. So if I pull this down, you can see that yes, the highlights are a little less bright, but it's a completely different effect because we can't see those clouds anymore and the detail on the pavement just isn't there. And then if we look at our histogram, you can see that those values have been pushed back towards the center, but there's this really sharp drop off where we can actually see those highlights clipping. They're still clipped, they're just a little darker than absolute white. So those basic panel adjustments and the tone curve are not the same thing. The basic panel has access to the entire detail within the raw file, whereas the tone curve is only editing what we can actually see after we've kind of set the sidelines of the dynamic range with the basic panel. Hopefully that makes sense because not a lot of people in tutorials and things like that actually point out this difference. You can even see that in the tone curve histogram. So there's actually another histogram behind the tone curve. We can see it here. So if I was just to reset everything back to normal, you can see that that histogram looks much like the histogram in the top of the panel. And when we, let's say, adjust our highlights like that, you can see that changing and updating. Now, if I was to reset these, and then let's say make an adjustment to our highlights and our shadows in the tone curve, that histogram doesn't change. So the way I like to think of it is that these basic panel adjustments, they sort of create the overall dynamic range that we want in our photo. So let's say we want a little bit of that highlight detail back. We wanna bring back a little bit of that shadow. And then we can start working with this image to make finer adjustments to the overall contrast using the tone curve. So for me, it's like a two layer system. You have the basic panel first that allows you to define the level of detail that you want across your image. And then the tone curve is just about making finer adjustments. So I've got a portrait image of Mia that I took here just to show you guys some different ways that you can use the tone curve. Now there are two different tone curves. So there's the parametric tone curve here and then the point curve. So the parametric is just a more simple version. So the points have already been drawn for you and then you can use sliders. Maybe you're more familiar with sliders because most of Lightroom is based on sliders to adjust the different areas in the curve. You can also use these little tabs here to move those points back and forth. But in general, you're just going to be working with four different zones of the tone curve. The point curve, which is what I prefer, allows you to draw your own points and have as many points along the graph as you'd like. So I could go in here and draw five or six points, put them anywhere along the curve that I want and then just pull them up and down however I see fit. One of the most obvious things that we can do with the tone curve is create contrast. So if I draw a point at the top of the curve and one near the bottom, drag the one at the bottom down and the one at the top up, 
you can see that we've created some contrast. This is giving a similar effect to that contrast slider in the basic panel, but that contrast slider will adjust the shadows and the highlights at the same time. The cool thing about the tone curve is you can adjust them individually. So if you wanted darker shadows, but not quite as bright highlights, you could definitely dial that in. You could also raise the black point of the image, making nothing really in the image overall exactly black. So I could draw a point down here near the bottom and then raise this black point up and it gives it kind of like a faded, nostalgic, almost like an underexposed film kind of look. You could do a similar thing to create faded highlights. So let's do the same up here. I'm gonna create a point and then bring the absolute whites down a little bit. I might actually just bring this point down a little bit. And then as you can see, overall, it's just like a faded, more subdued look. Now, last of all, we have the RGB tone curve, which is much like the Luma tone curve. However, we're adjusting the different colors in the image. What I would use the RGB curves most commonly for is introducing color casts into the different tonal ranges in the image. So you can see this gradient behind the tone curve here. We've got blue in the top left-hand corner and then yellow in the bottom right-hand corner. So if we wanted to add a little bit more warmth to the shadow areas of the image, we would just grab this black point and then just bring it more towards yellow and you need to be fairly careful with this because it is a pretty drastic effect even moving the slider two or three points can really have a big effect overall to the image then let's say for example we want to introduce maybe a little bit of red to the highlight so i'll come over here to the red slider and then i will grab the highlight point and then push that more towards red again we're only going like a couple of points here but you can see that those highlights those brighter areas of the image are coming up a little bit more red so here's a before and then an after. Another cool thing that you can actually do is save custom curves. So if you have a curve that you really like and you wanna apply it to all of your images, you can come down here to this point curve and then click on custom and then hit save. And then you'll just be able to create a brand new point curve here. You could call it whatever you like. So I'll just call it tone curve, super original, I know and then hit save. And then that will be accessible here in your catalog. You can apply it to every other image that you might want to edit with the same style. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you learned something, make sure you hit that like button down below and leave a comment down in the comment section if you have any questions for me as well. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.